Okay, recording. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 111. We're going to preemptively title this Security Checkboxes. And we are recording on March 31st, which apparently is national or worldwide or internet-wide backup day. So while we talk, set up your backups to go. And we'll go from there. But Tom wants to start off with, before we talk about security checkboxes, what happened in Apple in the last week. And because we said Apple, we should get a hundred new, at least a hundred new listeners just for saying Apple. So let's say Apple yes. a four times. Android bad, Apple, 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 yeah. Apple, Apple. More Apple. So okay. uh, it, it looks like it looks like the feds uh, ran with their tails between their legs because Tim Cook told them no, and there's no way they could ever open up that iPhone, um, which isn't really what happened. But uh, the FBI has dropped their case against Apple because someone came forward, um, celebrate, as we know now from the disclosure, uh, and they helped the FBI unlock this one iPhone and only this one iPhone because they swore it was just this one iPhone. And mere hours after this news came out that the FBI had gotten into this iPhone 5C, um, <laughs> plenty of district attorneys from many states around, around the United States uh, decided to contact the FBI and say, hey, can you open these for us too? To which the FBI replied, yes, very yes. Um, yeah, that, that there's a phone in Arkansas now. It's the same iPhone. What they didn't realize, they just shifted it. It is the exact only iPhone, so they don't have to actually approve, so they can keep their lie up. It's a then it turns out it's a five C. Yeah, we it's, didn't say this iPhone five C. We just said five C. Yeah, it's it's just it's one model of iPhone. But this the, this dot was self referential to the whole. Uh, yeah, exactly. Line. Yeah, not exactly. just the color, the entire line. It's it's the royal model. It's like when you say something in English and it's the implied model of the situation. Totally legit. Everyone was just really confused. It oh, was just one meant, model of iPhone. You meant, you meant 5C? Oh, we thought you just meant Apple. Just Apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just Apple. Just Apple type phones. It's the understood Apple. I mean, come yeah. on, this is basic English. I don't know why we didn't pick up on this. Yeah, so yeah, Arkansas right now is is chomping at the bit. The New York District Attorney, all these things are trying to get in to all of this. And the problem is, is don't look like everyone's saying, oh, Apple won the case. Apple probably lost the case. It's just they didn't have to do it. They didn't have to unlock the phone. But now there's an actual working exploit out there that is getting into it, and we don't know how. And Apple doesn't know how. Right. I, I'm pretty sure that... Uh, Apple or someone else is going to come forward. I mean, uh, because these phones are being unlocked now, it's only a matter of time before someone blabs about how it's being done and uh, the bug gets fixed. But, you know, I, I wouldn't say Apple won or lost. Um, I think the only thing we've done is we've pushed this a little bit farther into the future, this whole debate uh, about, about encryption, about personal liberties, about privacy. Um, we're not going to have a case go all the way to the Supreme Court where the Supreme Court either says privacy is dead or you have the right to remain silent um, or you have the right to remain encrypted. Um, it's I, I'm kind of disappointed. I was really looking forward to this coming to a head uh, because it looks like Apple through the media, through people talking about it, through you know shows such as Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, um, that Apple – has really garnered public support, that people are becoming more informed about encryption, more informed about privacy, and more informed about what the FBI was really asking Apple to do, uh, which is super dangerous and horrible, and we've covered it a million times on the show about why it's a bad idea. Um, but I, I really think that public opinion was swaying Apple's way, uh, and the FBI saw that, and uh, the conspiracy theorist in me says, look, they knew they could get into the phone if they went to someone else. They knew that they didn't have to have Apple do this, but they were going, you know, they were they were going for the throat with the, oh, it's save the children, act of terrorism, break the encryption. Apple, you have to help us and you're destroying national security. And the people didn't bite. And Apple fought way harder than anyone was expecting them to. The entire tech industry fought way harder than anyone was expecting them to. 
Well, the problem is, is that, uh, no, you're right. <laughs> we have this issue now. I think now would have been the good time to solve it. And I think the FBI was, I mean, even within the FBI, they're saying this is a bad idea. The NSA has come out and said this is a bad idea. And all Apple did is point everywhere to, hey, why don't you ask the NSA? Why don't you ask this? Why don't why don't you do everything except ask us? Because we don't think you did. And you're coming after us because it's 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 going at the heartstrings of, oh, it's terrorism and people are dead and everything else. But but and now they found their way in. So we're going to push this to another day and people are going to encrypt and hopefully Apple and Android and Samsung all look at it and say, how can we make this better? How can we make sure that we don't get tasked with this? So we can say, we absolutely can't help you. Right. And the the thing that, you know, Android devices, many Android devices, I'm not going to say most, have going for them is if someone really, really cares about security, they can take a custom ROM and they can throw it onto their device. um, And... There's nothing a manufacturer can do to backdoor that. Uh, it's The encryption model in Android is pretty strong. It's pretty good. Uh, and especially if you are the only one controlling your software, if you make sure that, uh, you know, device administrators can't, you know, like the Android device manager, can't change your password on the fly. Um, if you make sure that your phone won't complete booting uh, until you've typed in your, your pin or passphrase to decrypt it. That's really powerful stuff. That's great. Um, but you know, for, for the majority of Android phones, they don't have the power that Apple has behind them because they're a bunch of smaller companies, right? It's not Google, right? Google makes the open source project and, and they put Google apps out on stuff and they help device manufacturers. But you know, we're talking about Huawei, uh, HTC, Samsung, uh, Motorola. We're, we're talking about really small companies that don't really have the guts or the legal firepower or especially the money to go up against the FBI. Uh, Apple literally has more money than anyone ever. Uh, and they've got deep pockets and uh, great lawyers to help fight. Well, I was going to ask, why couldn't we just buy out the FBI? I mean, I, I've been asking this a lot. You know, Apple could. And I, I think that would be great if they just said, hey, look, 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 at FBI. Listen, um, they pull out their wallet. Yeah, you guys, you work for us now. All right, you are ours. You are now Apple's FBI. You are the iFBI. And uh, and, and you're going to go ahead and drop this case. Also, you're going to investigate all Android users. Why on earth are they using this? Like we said this, Apple has $206 billion. I mean, that's 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 a lot of money. That That's, that's a definite a lot of money. They and, could buy uh, countries. I mean, countries. I mean, so I, I don't know what the operating budget of the FBI is, but I, I like I said, I, I don't know. I mean, I thought that we were going to hear that Apple was going to go buy Cellubrite, or maybe that's the next thing. If they don't give up this exploit, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Apple just buys them. That would be utterly hilarious if because Apple just went through and bought them and said, yeah, okay, now what's the exploit? Well, now, now, hold on. Remember, Apple and Google and all these are using that Irish tax canary sandwich thing, and I'm saying it wrong, but there's some sort of double thing where you you funnel your money through Ireland to not pay taxes. Apple can't bring the money in. They can only keep the money foreign. So buying an Israeli company is keeping the money foreign. And guess what? It's now they can buy and they can say, we are the most secure. This, this exploit, the FBI hired these people. These are the people that we need to make our phone secure. And it gets them the PR and everything else. And it's uh, saying, and it's telling the FBI, hey, we really do care about security. We're willing to pay some money. So, so I, I literally just bought a Nexus 6P. But if Apple went and bought Celebrate, and then said, I'm sorry, FBI, these are our devices now. We're not going to help you unlock any more phones. I might have to buy an iPhone just out of posterity, just out of respect. I mean, well, that, that's 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 a topic for another show on how I think the the iPhone, that new iPhone, the iPhone I see may be the device I start telling people to buy because it is cheap, 400 bucks, four-inch phone, but that's a different show and a different time, so... Look, I, I think that I think that there's gonna the public is starting to ask these questions, which is for the most part what we wanted. 
The reason we started this podcast is to talk about security in an easy way. And here you have something that's going on the mainstream media. In fact, apparently there's a Twitter uh, handle, uh, CNBC Googling, which is all the stupid stuff that CNBC says, which is hilarious. Uh, but they're basically going and saying, saying, here are the issues. And people are listening. People are. It's starting to come to the forefront on what should we do. And who knows? Hopefully this can continues and people start seeing that that security is important on either side you may say you know what we should absolutely get in and that's your right to say it and and go for it but but just remember that there are people like tom like myself who don't necessarily want the government accessing everything right and you know the cat's out of the bag just because google's version of their operating system that they put on my phone uh contains the government backdoor doesn't mean that Cyanogen mod will. Doesn't mean that some other dude's ROM that he made in Germany and slapped an English language pack on it, right? That's not going to have the Americans back over. So I'm going to get the encryption I want, regardless of of what operating system the United States government tells me I have to use, or or dip, uh, regardless of what backdoor they tell me I have to have installed, right? They don't control the entire software stack of the internet. I can go out and find my own encryption. Look, Amazon uh, just released their new Fire tablets, which if you want if you want anything to show that Google is not monopolizing Android, is Amazon putting their own fork of Android on there without an app store with their own app store with their own anything. And they didn't put encryption and I think it lasted 48 hours before they reversed their tune. Yeah, yeah, they they announced right in the heyday, which was the worst time to announce this, um, right in the heyday of the Apple versus FBI thing, Amazon said, oh, wait, by the way, our fire stuff isn't going to have encryption you know, because reasons. And they didn't really give a great reason for it. Some people say it was performance related. Other people say they were literally just trying to avoid the FBI versus Amazon issue down the road. Um, and people went nuts. And uh, sure enough, encryption came back to the fire phone. Well, it's it's in a future update. It's not there yet, but oh, it is. okay. But you have to remember if you're buying the the Fire tablets and your six packs that they're selling. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you have the right to be secure, but it feels like all you're doing is something really simple. You're reading an ebook, stuff that not necessarily security is a big deal, but it's good to see that they're that they're sticking behind what they're going to say and they're they're going to put uh, encryption back on. So, right. For for this episode, the second part of this episode, we wanted to figure out what are – we wanted 10. I don't know if we can come up with 10, but really simple checkboxy type things that the average person can do that doesn't cost them time, doesn't cost them effort, doesn't cost them all that much. Maybe one Google search on how to do it, what they can do to make their lives better or more secure, or more private or anything like that. So, So you want to start? Tom, you want to start? Oh, you're muted. You're muted. I was gonna I'll start then. Well, today is National Backup Day. And so the first thing you need to do is back up your back up your computer. For Tom, you're some muted. Reason, I seem to have lost audio. I apologize. Okay, so, I'm back now. So, number one, backups. <laughs> um, well, backups are number two. Yeah, I seem to have just completely killed my sound somehow, but we're back. Well, I now. hear you now, and you sound good. So, um, so, so if you've if you've seen the show for any length of time, uh, this is going to be uh, a bit of repeated information because we keep going over the same security things. Security isn't a box you can buy. It's not uh, you know a security product you find online. It's not you know Bob Super Anti Malware Supreme that you download and that'll fix all of your problems forever, right? There's no silver bullets in security. It's all about it's. I hate saying this because it sounds like really corny, but it's a holistic approach. You've got to do a lot of little things to make yourself, you're not going to get, you know, completely secure. There's no such thing as completely secure unless you throw away your computer and turn off all the lights and hide in a bunker. Um, but it, it'll get you more secure. And the first way to do that, the best way to do that is automatic updates. Patch, patch. I don't care what operating system you're on. You can be on Linux. Hey, did you patch Shellshock? Did you patch Heartbleed? Right? There's a lot of bad stuff out there. Patch. Are you on Windows? Dude, 
every second Tuesday of the month, you have to patch, right? If you don't patch, your stuff gets owned, your computer stops working, and you are miserable because now you're you're in line at, at some computer store trying to get it fixed by, you know, people wearing nerd outfits. Um, if, if you're on the Mac, uh, the, the Mac is not invulnerable, as we've seen uh, recently. Uh, run, run your updates. And believe it or not, Apple does do security updates. They have a hidden anti-malware program that does run, it does watch things, and it does protect you. But you've got to keep your updates running for that to be effective. Well, what you have to do on the Mac is you have to, when it says, hey, there are updates, install them. Or check the box that says in uh, updates just to automatically install them. And they'll do it while you're sleeping. The Mac has, if you have a new Mac power nap, it will turn it on. But just check the box. Just every once in a while, do it now. Check, see if the box is checked. If it's not checked, check it. Because it will do it, will do it if you're, even on a Chromebook, it does it automatically. Make sure the updates are done automatically. Uh, another big tenet of security, um, and this is very timely because today is International Backup Day. Uh, one of the main tenets of security is data availability, right? Um, just like a DDoS attack is a security issue, right? It knocks resources offline. It makes them inaccessible. Data availability is huge. And one of the best ways you can make sure your data is available is to keep backups. Uh, just remember the 3 two, one rule, as uh, you know, Leo Laporte and Steve Gibson love to say on, on This Week in Tech, uh, three copies of the data. So... One locally on your machine, one on something else that you backed up to, whether it's DVDs. Do people still use DVDs? Writable Blu-rays, external hard drive, whatever. If you've got a NAS sitting in the corner, that's great. Throw it on free NAS, be done with it. Uh, but one of those backups for your third copy, it should be off-site. Because if the worst happens, if your place burns down, if you get hit with a bulldozer or a meteor or something, you want to be able to go somewhere else and get your data. Uh, and... You know, people that have kids, they have a lot of pictures. There's a lot of important stuff that you need to keep backed up. So keeping something off-site is absolutely important. If you aren't backing up off-site right now, you sh you need to. You really need to. Listen to – we had an episode a few uh, – like a month ago where we said if you can't afford paying someone off-site, figure out what's important and figure out – there's a lot of free ways to get your photos online, whether that be Google Backup or Flickr Backup or if your music, Google Play Music or whatever it is. There are ways to get around this. It's not necessarily the most private, but at least it's another backup. So I, I had an encrypted external hard drive. And once a month, I drive it over to my buddy's house. I mean, he only lived like. 10 minutes away from me. So it's not like I'm backing it up across state lines or anything, but I figure if there were anything big enough to take out my house and my buddy's house 10 minutes away, I'm probably not concerned about the data on my computer at that point. But I would literally just take an external hard drive over to his place, pick up my drive, and then back up to the one I just took back. And that way, and I did this like every month or so. So I knew that in the absolute worst case, I have lost one month of data. And well, the the important takeaway from this is not what is your backup solution, but find the checkbox. Uh, Windows has it in Windows has it in their control panel and their security and action center. Mac has the uh, time machine. Linux is a little harder with rsync, but it's still there. Well, Linux on the desktop. Um, if you're running with the more popular distributions, has got a great program called Deja Dupe. Um, or it's, it's sometimes listed under just backups in your applications menu. Um, Deja Dupe is fantastic. It does everything you want. I, I point it at a drive, um, and it does the rest. You can back up to FTP. You can back up to Amazon S3. You can back up over SSH. It does everything. Uh, so check that out. But if you're on a server, rsync is great. And if you're running a Linux server, rsync is great. You should totally use it. So you're backed up. Then you have ad block, and I want to change that to not necessarily ad block, but script block. Not uh, not not JavaScript yeah. block, but like U block. We we don't want to we don't want to hurt the advertisers, but we don't want their ads. I I would like to hurt the advertisers. They they have given me more drive by downloads and, and malware than you know I can even think about with client machines. Well, look, we did have the last weeks. All the major sites got hit with malvertising. Yep. 
where which which if you want to talk about the pros the reasons to use ad block is yes you're taking money away from the advertisers and the websites but but they're causing problems they yeah. are they really are causing problems and they're not sitting there helping you fix it malvertising is a huge issue and it, it keeps getting more and more common uh and it's it's a really hard thing to block when you allow javascript in your ads because you know that's a good idea um but uBlock origin is great it works in firefox it works in chrome uh and i think that will bring us to our next topic which is please use chrome um, with, with Firefox, you know, if, if you're on the internet and you've got flash content, which is dwindling, but it's not totally dead, uh, Firefox may not be an option for you, uh, because of the next item on our list, which I just switched the order of. Um, but if Firefox may not be an option. Chrome has got its own flash built in. It gets security updates really quickly. It gets updated with Chrome. You don't even know it exists. So use Chrome, use uBlock Origin and get rid of flash, get rid of Java. Yeah, well, yeah. Get rid of. They said this. Go through your uh, your 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 applications that are installed. If you haven't used it, if it's free and you haven't used it, take it out. If it's paid for, find the serial number, keep it somewhere, and then uninstall it. If you're not using it, there's no reason to have it up, especially when it installs the little desktop uh, calendar icon that says, "Hey, I'm still here. I'm loading up on boot and slowing your machine down." Oh, I hate that. All the helpers. Oh, yeah. They're everywhere. So, yeah, the the big three are Adobe Reader, Flash, and Java. If if you say, ah, Adobe Reader, how am I going to PDF? Um, Well, there's great PDF viewers out there. Uh, An open source one I recommend is called Sumatra PDF. Uh, It's a great open source application. It doesn't do the fancy stuff that Adobe Reader does, but chances are you don't need any of the fancy stuff Adobe Reader does. Because Adobe Reader, because of all that fancy stuff, that's increased attack surface. That's just a bigger area for bad guys to muck with and get you a virus. Um, it's you, you don't need a PDF reader that can run embedded Flash or show 3D spinning objects or load active content inside of your PDF, right? You need to look at documents. And Sumatra PDF is great for that. Load up, and I'll, I'll tell you the story in a second. Remember, Chrome does Adobe in it. So you yes. have to find the flag. We're talking about checkboxes. There is a flag either in settings or Chrome in the flags there that will make you have to click to show either Adobe or Flash content. So you want to make sure you enable that, not just just run it because it's one more thing. It's another default ad blocker. You don't want flash ads. You don't want to, uh, what was it, punch the monkey anymore or whatever else they're doing now. Yeah, click to play is great and it really speeds up pages. Uh, just like ad block will speed up your, your web browsing, uh, click to play does the same thing. And if you really want it to run, you can click on it and it'll play. And I believe it'll ask you on certain sites, hey, do you want this to always play? So you can go ahead and set a default. I will tell you that the CNN website has an autoplay that you cannot pause. Oh, like it's really bad. bad. Like you can't pause it. So your best thing is just to mute it for the 30 seconds. And it's not necessarily an ad. It's whatever is going. It's the breaking news of the day, which is breaking news. There's no news today. So are they still searching for that plane? Well, the probably. (laughs) <laughs> yes, they, they found another piece, and now, yes, they are. It's not as bad, but let's cut to Twitter to see what Twitter has to say about the plane. So, well, the problem is there's lots of planes. So, um, but again, check that box. I will tell you, and it, this is a problem. This is where we need people to start pushing. New Jersey, I was trying to download tax forms for the state of New Jersey, and I'm putting it in. And they did some weird auto update. So in Chrome, I could not get the PDF. It's a PDF. It says download it. I click download. I run it in Chrome and it won't load. I print it out. It says click here to update. I click everywhere. I can't do it. But if I open it in Adobe Reader, it magically opens. I don't know what that yeah. is, but that's probably some sort of script running to that's, make sure yeah. that social security number is in the right form or whatever it is. 
Yeah, that's that's active content, and you should see that. And if you see active content, you should get angry. You should start yelling, and you should say, "Dude, you're building this in a PDF. It's 2016. Make an HTML5 page and be done with it." Right? Get angry. Like I got it. It's the tax forms. They want you to download, but why can't you make a static tax form? This is not a hard thing. But again, it's my right as an American to pay taxes. So we have this. We have this up here. Tom put it in Signal, and I, I think the better thing is to evaluate your 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 chat communication clients. Figure out the most secure chat communication client that you can do and use it. We recommend Signal. We've always recommended the Signal. But if you're on the iPhone, you're not going to move away from iMessage. It just won't happen. So iMessage is is good, but it's not perfect. Yeah, I, iMessage has got um, a vulnerability that Apple is frantically um, trying to fix. They've got a workaround in place right now, but it's it's not a perfect messaging system, right? Uh, you know, Matthew Green, uh, he's a, a cryptographer, said, you know, we, why are we concerned about, you know, everything when we can hardly get encryption right, right? Because there are fundamental issues with the way that uh, iMessage handles attachments that, you know, threaten to break what, uh, what they've built. And it's, uh, it's a hard problem to solve. Um, you know, cryptography is not easy at all. Um, but, uh, I message is definitely better than the rest. Uh, it's going to be better than telegram. I will say again, don't use telegram, stay away from telegram. It is only bad news. Uh, and signal signals really nice. I like it. Um, it could use some polish in some areas. I'm not going to lie, but, uh, it works well. Look, telegram is if you don't want your buddy to be snooping the traffic, but if you, if, if there's a nation state going after you. Telegram is – they'll find a way through Telegram. From what I'm hearing, right. Telegram and WhatsApp and all these, they have bots, which are apparently awesome. But I don't know what you need a, necessarily a bot for. I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. But Signal is pretty. It's just – it's not going to win any design awards. So, yeah, it works well enough. Look, iMessage, again – Apple somehow controls the keys. What they will do or what they – they I think in this San Bernardino thing, they did turn it over because they were asked to and they did. So it's it's not 100% secure. But again, if the, if a nation state is going after you, 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 you're you not listening to this podcast. <laughs> I'll tell you, you're going to be finding other ways to secure things. Uh, there's one we – I totally skipped over accidentally, uh, which is social network permissions. Yeah. Okay, so so there's a website, mypermissions.org, not mypermissions.com. They're probably the same company, but one is we're going to help you, and the other one is we're going to give you a free app, which we're not asking you to install a free app. Go through the permissions that you gave Twitter, go, Facebook, Instagram. If you're not using it, if you're not using Gowalla anymore or Foursquare or Swarm, if you didn't know that they switched names, uninstall it. It's, it's just an OAuth token. You can get it back. But if you haven't used it, just uninstall it. It keeps you a little safer. Yeah, I, I went through and I did a, a massive purge on my uh, on my Twitter account with various applications I had accrued over the years. And oh man, like some of those companies, I I went on a full nostalgia trip. So I'm like, oh man, I remember I remember Gowalla. How how did I ever live without that? How do I live without it now? And I was like, oh, yeah, it was kind of annoying. Okay. <laughs> so it's not – it's – yeah, these companies are defunct now. But look, you may you may have sworn off Candy Crush and just get rid of it. Just just Zynga, no. Just say no. It's too high in sugar. Okay. Just just no. And and so if the good part is, trust me, they haven't deleted any of the stuff off the server. So when you click on reauthorize, all your levels will be there. Yeah. Or you'll have to pay an in-app purchase to get it, but they're yeah. still there. Um, let's talk about device security and locking down devices. Now, just about every modern device has got a fingerprint reader. And if you're on an iPhone, use it. Absolutely use it. Um, and, I, and that feels weird of me to say, uh, to, to go against Android. Um, 
But in my own personal experience with an Android fingerprint reader, it's just not up to snuff. So with the iPhone, you can set a fingerprint. And if you mess it up, it'll say, whoa, 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 no more fingerprints. You've already, you already lost your chance. Go ahead and give me the pin or passphrase to get back in. Which is great because for the user, I can, you know, I can get my iPhone, I can hit the thing, I can get right in. Uh, if the feds are getting me, you know, I can quickly oh, jam wrong fingers everywhere and lock it out completely so they have to have the pin or passphrase. They cannot compel me to unlock it. And the iPhone says, I don't even unlock for fingerprints anymore because you messed it up too many times. It's great. Basically, you could set your iPhone to lock out after one, five, or ten different times. And then you have to type in your master password. So yeah. to have a really strong master password is awesome, which is a, is that's a little harder than just a checkbox to make a really strong master password. But on iPhone, you can say, you know what? If uh, the one time it didn't work, then you got to put a master password in. And you don't use your thumb. No one's going to know. You can say, hey, everyone used their thumb. You asked me to give my fingerprint. I gave you my fingerprint. I'm sorry it wasn't the right one. There's a lot of plausible deniability that Android doesn't have. Yeah. So with, with Android, so I, I got this Nexus 6P. I was really excited because I'm like, all right, I'm getting rid of my pen. Totally getting rid of it. I'm going to go full crazy passphrase and then use my fingerprint and have it lock me out after one try. And then after a couple hours, you know, totally lock up the device and make me put in the passphrase again. It doesn't really work that way. Uh, it seems that uh, at least on the build of Android that I'm on, um, if I use a fingerprint, it's fingerprint all or nothing. Uh, I can't, it'll fall back eventually. That's like after 10 times, right? I've got 10 fingers. I don't want to have to fail my device 10 times to keep it locked out from who knows what, someone coercing me to unlock my device. Um, so yeah, I, I can't, I can't say use it on Android yet. It will get better. It will start to emulate iOS. Can't believe I'm saying that. Um, it's a well, time. Look, we're running long, but I was going to say on the Nexus uh, fingerprint thing, it's it's they're get, like I said, they're getting there. It does randomly make you input your password at this time or a different time. But really, what you really want to do is, if you're on a pin, don't make it four. Make it longer than four. If yeah. you can make it five, just make it longer than four. Don't be four. Just be not four. <laughs> Eight isn't really hard to do. Remember, 10 is a phone number, a random 10-digit phone number with an area code. Yeah, that's so not yours. That's not yours or your girlfriend's or your dog's, but it is a phone number. So th that's not that hard to do. And yeah, and you can password haystack it. So you can end you can end it with 333 or 444 or 555 yeah. as long as it's longer than four digits. Yeah. The uh, the length on a pen is going to be the most important thing, so. I, unless unless you type in one eight times or one two three four one two three four. Please don't do that. Okay. So we we are running long. We've got two more. Do we want to save them for next time or go forward? Let's do it quickly. Okay. So uh, what goes along with pins and good passphrases? Encryption. Uh, every modern operating system has the ability to do encryption. Some operating systems are better than others at you know, prompting you and kind of nudging you to encrypt your device. I know when you turn on new, um, uh, new OS X devices, it'll pop up and it'll say, hey, you, you want to turn on encryption? This is pretty cool. Just throw in your username and password, but you know this box is checked unless you want to check it. And it'll go through and it'll do its encryption thing and it's, it works, it's great. Uh, Windows 10 has got boot lock, or boot locker, um, BitLocker, uh, and yeah, it's it's encryption by Microsoft, so who knows how backdoored it is, but when it comes to your average thief who steals your laptop off of an airport table, it's going to keep him out, so it's easy, just do it, and device encryption, um, most modern Android devices are going to have the ability to enable encryption, um, it, dig into the security menu, hit encrypt. If you've got a PIN or a password to unlock your phone, that's all you need, and it's done. The iPhone, 
Don't worry about it. It's already encrypted. By default, you don't have to worry. It's all encrypted. It's all there. Look, Apple does the right thing when you connect it to iTunes, which is even though a horrible program, it does the decryption for you. So you don't even know that it's encrypted. This is not a, oh, I noticed a slowdown. You're not noticing a slowdown. Same with Android on the newer phones. You're not going to notice it. It is... And it's they figured out a way with Android transfer to so you don't see the encryption. It just works. But if you turn it on, it will work and you will be happy. So do it. And then the the last thing on here, and I threw it in just because it's kind of hilarious and kind of terrifying, uh, is if you or anyone you know uses Trend Micro, anything from Trend Micro. I'm talking about password managers. I'm talking about their weird total security thing, antivirus. Anything Trend Micro has made, touched, or looked at, uninstall it right now. Turn off this podcast and uninstall it. Please, for the love of God. Um, Trend Micro is, again, uh, the target of a great Project Zero posting uh, where they have (laughs) fixed their vulnerability. But for a while there, uh, they had an active debugger live and available on customer systems. So someone could just send your machine a uh, a, a packet, an HTML request and say, hey, or uh, an HTTP request and say, hey, could you launch this application for me? And it would without fail with system permissions. I This is like the fourth time they've done this. So if you use Chromodo, uh, the, the Komodo security suite, get rid of Komodo, get rid of Trend Micro. Those two companies are trash. They are horrible and they are actively undermining the security of your system. If you need a replacement antivirus, Microsoft Security Essentials for Windows 7 is great. On 8 and 10, you don't have to worry about it. When It's been renamed to Windows Defender. It's automatic and it just does its thing. You can sit back and relax. Um, so don't even worry. But Trend Micro and Komodo... Get rid of everything related to them. And if you know of anyone using it, do your civic duty and get them off of it too. Correct. I mean, we heard this a few weeks ago, but they just clearly don't want to hear and they don't want to fix anything. So I think next week we should we should take this one step further, not talk about, let's say, 10 checkboxes, but just just things that we walk around and we see on a daily basis, the Internet of Things things, uh, where can we extend beyond checkboxes and how we can make our lives a little more secure just without really doing much. None of these things cost you anything. It's just a checkbox or a simple app install. So anyway, everyone, we will, we're going to wrap it up. We're running long and we will see you next week. See you guys. Bye. And we stop and we pause.